Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antique Serena. My name is Walter O'Neill, and in today's video, I'm going to well, it's not gonna be one video. Yesterday, I went to Sally Car Boot Sale. Um, what can I say? I bought that much stock, it's gonna be split into three videos, or maybe even four. Literally, I spent a few hundred pounds in Sally, and well. What can I say? Some of the stock is absolutely amazing. Some of it is working stock and there's one or two little question marks that I'm gonna to have to do some research on. So, um, yeah. So consider this uh, the introduction for all the videos because I'm gonna splice this at the beginning of every video now, guys. So I'm gonna split it into the three videos or four videos, wherever it is, do half a dozen to or so per video so you get to see the items correctly and tidy. And we're gonna go from there, but there's a lot of stock. I literally filled the car up yesterday. Gethly Gay was cancelled because of bog. It was too, so much rain over the last few months. They ran it last week and it was great, but we had more rain again this week and it was cancelled. So I went down to Sully. I done Sully first, walked down to Sully, bought absolutely tumps, then thought, oh, I'm gonna nip over to Bestman. I went up to Bestman and bought loads more. Then I thought, well, I was gonna go down to Bridgend. I thought time was ticking on by then. It was nearly up past 10. So I thought, I'm gonna go back to Sully because there were some pieces I saw earlier in the day that I left there that were just a bit dear or that I was oh, just being fussy because I was buying so much. And I was kicking myself when I was in Bessemer. And it'll teach me um, for kicking myself. But I went back and I had most of what I, what I wanted. I missed the one or two pieces I left there. Um, but they were slightly overpriced anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. But at the same time, I went back to Sully, walked around again as they were packing up, and I bought far more than I expected. And some really nice pieces that I would have bought if I'd seen them first time around. So all in all, yesterday was a magnificent buy-in day. Now I'm gonna change the structure of the videos this week slightly. Um, what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna see how it goes, and I'd like to know your opinions. I'm gonna show you half a dozen pieces tell you what I bought them for, then I'm going to research them on eBay and show you what I found. So you'll get to see the, say six or seven or eight pieces, wherever I do. Obviously I'll tell you what I bought them for before I do the research now, because I'm making it all. Then I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna find only comparatives on eBay and on Google and all the rest of it. And then I'll do a little video showing you what each one of those is actually worth. And then we'll close it up from there. So, yeah, hope you're ready. Okay guys, uh, bef welcome to part one. Uh, before I start, I wanna do a little bit of shout outs. First of all to Marie. Thank you very much. Love it. Now, Marie is a follower on the YouTube and a member of Antiques Arena on Facebook and he's always posting up um, useful information and his finds and things like that on there and he found this trench art ashtray last week and he knows I love trench art and the history of war memorabilia and things like that and he was adamant he was going to send it to me to say thank you for all my videos. I did say he didn't have to, but he was very kind. He sent it to me, and it's a First World War shell converted into an ashtray, so trench art. Thank you very much. This won't be sold. Um, this will be going away with the other pieces I've had. I had a Welsh dragon some time ago from the grog shop off Jeremy. I've still got that, mate. Um, so guys, thank you very much. I didn't expect it, so thank you, and I will keep it. A um, couple of shout outs. I saw Jeremy and Simon yesterday. Hi guys. Um, and it goes, here's a lesson as well, guys. Um, I was complacent, uh, I think that's the correct word, in Sully yesterday, I was buying so much stock. Um, I went up to a stall, and she had an entire stall full of blue and white banded Cornish wear. And I picked up four or five pieces, the larger pieces, straight away, and they all were the clover, the modern clover. And I was asking prices, and she was stupid money. She was tenors, fifteens, twenties. And I thought, you've got no hope in hell. I'd be wanting TG Green for that money, and then I'm not going to make fortunes. And she turned around to me, she said, I got none of the early stuff with the Green Shield mark. 
So I just left and walked away. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it was about 11 o'clock, um, maybe a bit sooner, it might have been, no, it was when I was off the vestment, so it had been about quarter to ten, something like that, I think. And Jeremy and Simon were just leaving, packing the car, and they called me over and he said, I've just bought a load of Cornish way. I said, yeah, I saw it earlier. I said, it was all the modern stuff, Clover, and he said, no, it wasn't. It was uh, quite a bit of early TG Green. He only bought the early TG Green stuff. And it wasn't the green stamp, I don't think. It was the 50s stamp. I think. Might be wrong. Um, but either way, he done really well. He bought a nice big collection offer, something like 70 quid or something like that. So not only did she come down on the prices, um, but he did actually manage to pull out some proper TG Green out of it. Well done. <laughs> what can I say? Proud of you. <laughs> Um, goes to show because um, I, I rush around in the mornings we all miss stuff even myself and it'll teach me not to take their word for granted to check myself because I don't listen to them when they say there's no gold in the jewellery box when they go oh it's only costume jewellery I still go in there and find gold so I should have gone through the Cornish way but I, do you know what I'm glad you are mate um, the next shout out is to Mike and to Chris um, both are followers that I met down in Sully who introduced themselves. Hi guys, thank you very much. Um, I bought off both of them. Uh, what can I say? I can't remember what I had off them. I know I had the Sandra's Christmas present, I think it was off Mike. Um, what did I have off the other one? Oh, God, do you know I can't remember a minute? I'll remember when I go through them, uh, but at the moment I can't remember what I had off them. But I've also had Sandra's Christmas present. Um, I don't mind if she sees it. My brother saw his uh, Wurzel Gummidge the other day, but hey-ho. Right, that's enough babbling. I'm going to get to it, guys. And I'm going to start off with one of my favourite buys of the day. And I mean my favourite. I don't know how well you can see it over there. This is a plaster bust of a lady, I think, <laughs> I think it's a lady. Um, now, it's come from Belgium. The man who sold it to me uh, used to live in Belgium and it came across with the family. Now, looking at it, I'd say it's a student piece, an art school's piece. Um, it's quite distressed, you know, flaking of the paint, bits of plaster showing, really nicely modelled, good size, mounted on an oak base, and do you know what? I give £15 for it. I love it. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a look later, I can't see me finding comparative um, busts, but I would say in a London shop, you're talking a couple of hundred pounds, but on eBay or in in my shop or an antique fair, I think I'm going to get about £100, but I will have a look, see if I can find anything on this bust. But just give you a nice little close-up look, guys. Really is quality. Nicely moulded. I actually don't mind all this plaster and that showing through and the distress. It looks part of it. So, and it's on this oak stand. And I tell you what, it weighs a ton. Size has got to be about 18 inches, something like that, guys. Just for you to have an idea, okay? So, that was my first piece for £15. Little Belgium, student piece, art piece. Over the moon with that. Um, what am I going to go for next? Right, well, since I've just spoke about TG Green and Banded Way, I'm going to show you my buys of TG Green. <sighs> First of all, we have the sugar, blue and white banded, in nice condition. And again, this one is the clover leaf. It's the TG Green I want. This one is TG Green, but it's the latest stamp, TG Green. I'll show you in the research, guys, the stamp you're looking for. And again, nice and clean. And this one is T. Obviously, I have the third. I would have liked these to have been the earlier stamps, 
but it, but with these the difference was these were a pound each literally one pound each and again the TG green clover leaf so the latest stamps um, but at the same time you know at a pound each I'm not gonna leave them there if I said 30 40 quid for the set of three you know I'd be happy enough I wouldn't care so we're gonna have a look see what they're selling for on eBay and to be honest with you, I'll probably put these in the shop it's something different I haven't really got any Cornish wear left in the shop I don't think so I'll be having a good sort out of the shop this week put some nice fresh stock in um, but yeah there's the three Cornish wear pieces he's down by you These next pieces I absolutely love. Right, game time. Who knows what that is? Are you guessing yet? It's not a pen. Okay. They just used this box. I know there was no way you could guess, but it was a bit of fun. The other way. Very careful. I don't know if you can see. Let me very gently hold them. I can tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick one up. I have two. And I tell you what, do I love them? Two dried and preserved seahorses. Real seahorses, guys. Real ones. I've never seen the like on a car boot cell. And the detailing on them still is absolutely unbelievable. I'd much rather them be in the sea, but oh God, they are absolutely beautiful. Um, so we have a pair or two preserved seahorses. They cost me 50 pence a seahorse. Oh, bless them. But you know what? I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to research these. We're gonna have a go. Bring me, in my opinion, to me, they go going out at least a tenner each. That is something different, and that's what I like my antique shop to be, is different. I don't want, you know, I'll buy anything, but I'd rather have pieces that they can't go down to local jewellers or down a local porcelain shop and buy it there. I like pieces that I don't have competition with selling. So what's that? That's three pieces, isn't it? Bear with me a second, guys. Right, um, next, I'm going to show you a piece that I bought for myself. This isn't really for resale. As you know, I'm studying Chinese porcelain. Um, and one of the areas I've moved to now, I've, I've studied all the export blue and white. And I'm pretty confident I can identify 18th century export wear and 19th century export wear. Um, so I've moved on to monochromes, which is the coloured vases. And I've picked up a Chinese green monochrome vase. Chinese porcelain. It has... Qinglong mark, I think it is, Qinglong mark, on the base. Um, it's quite common to see them drilled for, turned into lamps in the 20s. However, one clue for me that this isn't an early one is that hole is actually glazed. So this was actually made with the hole in it, which the originals wouldn't have been. Um, that, is it? I think it's a rubber stamp mark. I'm gonna have to have a look under an eyeglass. Now the way uh, you tell a rubber stamp mark is you'll have bleeding in the lines and that but anyway not going into all the details it's got a chip as well but there I bought that purely for myself um, I thought in my opinion it's a 20th century copy of a 19th century monochrome um, but it's good to have the modern more modern example so I can study this and when I see the real article I'll, I'll immediately identify the differences and it's nice for me to look at this and say, well, what's wrong with this piece? That's wrong, that's wrong. 
the foot rim is glazed for starters that's wrong uh, there's lots wrong with it and it's nice for me to look at it and think hmm yeah I can see what's wrong with it and when I when I do get a real one damage for perfect I'll put them side by side and what a perfect comparison I'll have so that one was for me next piece I bought is for somebody else one of the members on the site um, said to me, he posted up about Victorian glasses now and how he's struggling to identify them and he has no comparisons for comp you know, comparing. Um, he posted up a little Victorian, uh, well, he was hoping he was a Victorian runner with cut glass, but it was a modern example it was. Um, and I actually said to him that I would go out and I would uh, send him a Victorian rummer so he can have comparison. Well, not only have I done that, I'm doing better. You can have one of the rummers out of the shop, I don't worry about that. But I've gone out and I have bought an 18th century engraved Georgian drinking glass. That's the sound you're looking for, guys. All right, now this one's chipped on the rim, chipped on the feet. If they're damaged, only buy them if you want them as a comparative. It's got the snapped pontal mark here, nice conical foot, and a nice drawn trumpet stem. Beautiful styrations you're looking for, a wavy top, you're looking for all the imperfections in the glass, the color, the gray tone, everything. Now this glass and the rummer, I paid a pound for this one on the weekend because of the damage. This glass and a rummer is gonna be packed up and shipped to him free of charge just to try and help him. Um, and you'll, you'll now have a comparative 19th century rummer and an 18th century glass so we can see the difference. Um, what can I say? I go out looking for a Georgian and found one straight away. Alright, it's chipped. But I found one. You don't get that on the 19th century rummers. They just don't have the same sound. Love it. Whatever you do, don't, don't flick them to a break. <laughs> so, in perfect condition, guys, that glass would have been a 30 to 40 pound glass. And I do pick these up for 50p in a pound. Honestly, I do. Uh, but to go out to Sally with the intention of finding him a Georgian to send to him um, with the Victorian so he could learn the glass, then do you know what? That'll be on his way to him this week. He has sent me his uh, address. But the two glasses will be on his way. On their way to him. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Um, okay, now I'm going to show you a piece I know absolutely nothing about. Why not? Right. So we have quite um, an abstract kind of painting. We have a man here shooting a bow and arrow, I think. Uh, it's almost tribal in its... Um, painting style as you look around you have the sun and carrying the dead deer but they the catch uh, walking back the hunting party you have all the animals that they would have hunted the buffalo the stag the rabbit and so on around the bottom here so we talk an interesting pottery uh, studio pottery um, it is stamped on the base and the downside about it is I can't read it a minute. I'm going to have to get an eyeglass on there. Um, but it's got an elephant with a trunk raised. The Razi pottery or something like that. I'm going to get an eyeglass on it. I'm going to do some research. And I will show you the research wherever I find. But it is fully marked. I loved the decoration. Now the vase they may sell for a fiver for all. I know I paid £3 for it. Just as a decorative vase in the shop it's going to go for 20 quid. However, I love this whole story of the hunting party and the animals and everything. So that is going to be researched and we'll find out what we can find about that in just a minute. And obviously you'll get to see any research I do. Oh. I'll give you one more in this video guys and then we'll call it by there. Uh, well, these are as good as any. I have a pair of frogs, if you like. That's what we call them. Uh, why are they called frogs? They basically, they're just centerpieces that would sit in the bowl. Uh, 
Sowerby, Bagley, Davidson, loads of them done them, Walther and Sohn, loads of people done them, I'm not 100% on who've done these ones yet, um, I'll find out, it'll be easy enough. They've come in all different styles, mermaids, naked ladies and so forth. Now I paid a pound each for these and they're in lovely condition. Now I already know there's going to be lots of people out there with bowls missing these centrepieces and believe it or not, I'll get between 10 and 20 pound each for these. Uh, but I will have a look online and see what we can get. Downside with this glass, always went to Australia. Bloody fortune in shipping. Um, it was always, always expensive for the shipping it was. So, anyway. Yeah, that's those two. So that's the first little group. And you'll see the, um, the research on those in just a minute. Okay guys, so um, looking at the uh, pieces in this first video now, I'm going to do a little bit of research on them all. Now I've had a quick look here and to be totally honest with you, um, this Belgian art school bust is going to be hard to, uh, to find. There are literally hundreds and thousands of different busts, all you know, ranging 19th century, 20th century, plaster, uh, all these are plaster ones so there's no way I'm going to attribute it to anybody in particular so I come on to eBay and I just thought I'll have a look see what sort of money plaster busts, busts are going for and see if I can find anything comparative and to be honest with you I can't um, what I'm looking for is a 20th century you know, Belgian or French plaster bust uh, but an art school version and to be honest with you, I haven't been able. No, I haven't been able to find anything that I would say, yeah, that's in the line of what I got. Um, that was quite close by here. This one, um, the sculpt type of sculpted and everything is done, but they bronze finished over the plaster with that one, um, where mine's just painted black. But the sculpting is similar on that one. And that one was signed where mine isn't. So the plaster bust, to be honest with you, is just going to be so decorative. I'm not going to be able to find out anything about that to see who who made it and who it is. So it's just going to be so decorative and I'm going to be asking probably 85 or 95 for the plaster bust. Moving on to the TG Green, I told you um, the early marks you want to look for are the Green Shield. That's the mark you want to look for, guys, on early TG Green. Uh, the green shield stamp then you went obviously the different marks here all the way up and you can you saw that mine was the TG green clover leaf um, But that's the the big mark you're looking for guys. That's the important one And if I flick across here, you can see this is some of the prices you can achieve on some of the rarer green marks Look at that and these are salt prices bath salts 392 some vinegars and so on, and sauce, 350. Borax, 310. You know, you can get some good money. But then you come on to the later ones like I've got, and you're talking, there we are. That's the 1980s, the ones that I got, storage jars, 49 pound for the three. To be honest with you, I'll probably ask 35, 40 quid. So that's where we're at with the TG Green guys. Uh, with the sea horses, I've looked and looked and looked, and to be honest with you, I found one person who was from China selling a job lot of sea horses for like a tenner, um, supposedly real ones, and to be honest with you, I don't believe it for a second. Then you got these, which are resin, 735 for three. Other than that, I can't find anything whatsoever on the sea horses. What I did find was information saying uh, where we at there? Charity has said that sea horses could be extinct within 30 years. So, I won't be letting my sea horses go anytime soon cheap. I'm going to be asking about £15 each for them. Um, I showed you the modern monochrome vase that I had, and I think this is a similar sort of colour. Well, I think it's actually that colour there, but um, I've gone for a nice simple vase because the pictures illustrated on this listing are quite good but i'm going to give you a little look you can see all the chinese monochrome vases and things 
they do a lovely variety peach bloom a nice deep blue you know some really nice colors so i'm trying to look at this field now so i've started buying even the modern one i had um and if we come down here i'll show you the underneath of this one i don't know whose it is and you can see there clearly the difference you see the unglazed rim and there's no hole um, and so forth everything i knew mine was modern when i bought it but i wanted a modern example what's next right the pottery vase with the um hunting scene and the people carrying this stag the dead stag took a little bit of research and that is what it is there and don't ask me to pronounce it because you've got no hope in hell it is a south african pottery um there's the mark that's on mine but there in fact i got it here Sand. hold on a minute left i want to see the mark uh there's the mark it was very hard to read turn it up the other way clockwise I want to see the mark's hand. There we go. It was very hard to read, but we finally got there. Um, and there are no comparative sales, nothing whatsoever. So I know the make. I know it's South African porcelain and pottery, but what I don't know, I can't find another of this design anywhere whatsoever. So what am I going to put on that vase? Probably 35, 45 pound. Then we look at the Art Deco ladies. Um, I think that's the one I got there. It should be in the bowl. And I think it's a Sowerby. Uh, but there's all different companies, Duham, Cambridge and so forth. There's loads and loads of different designs. Um, and I went to eBay to have a little look. Hang on, there's another one there with more yet again more ladies so i went to ebay to have a look at the prices and believe it or not some of them are astronomically expensive but i think that's as close to mine as i'm going to find which is 20 quid 20 quid 15 to 20 pounds seems to be a pretty fair price for these single frog ladies so they that's where we're at with those guys okay guys um hopefully you've enjoyed seeing this video and the bits of research i'm going to run this series every single day um so basically i got i think six seven videos wherever it is i'm gonna run one a day and get sully's buying out the way it's just so many so much stock and so many videos made from one day's buying i'm just not going to keep up if the buying keeps up like this wow what a year it's going to be um i don't know where to start um yeah Spend a few hundred quid, but you know what, guys? Wow, wow, wow. Over the moon. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, you've enjoyed seeing the video. Stay tuned for the rest of the series, guys, on this Sully Buy-In, part one through all the way you up. Um, <laughs> and hopefully, you uh, like the new style of uh, filming. Show you a bit of research as well. If you did, let me know, guys um because if you don't like that side of it i won't put it in anyway thank you very much for watching um if you've enjoyed i would appreciate a like and a share guys if you're new to the channel please subscribe leave me know you subscribe and i'll give you a thumbs up you'll find me on facebook i have a page in the group antiques arena you'll find me on ebay antiques arena clearance i have my own website antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com or you can come to the shop and visit me in the shop it's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxrod, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.